Hello everybody, I'm David. And I'm John. <laughs> and we're the little guys, and we're here to talk about uh, some cool stuff that's going on and things that you can do with your new home or remodeled home or addition or even just retrofit into your, into your uh, existing home. I know we said we'd be on at 10.30, but you know there's always some technical difficulty. What is the deal? But here we are. So, um, whether you're just refinishing the basement, whether you're building a new home, again, whether you're remodeling your existing home uh, or putting on an addition, there's lots of cool things you can do. And uh, we're going to take you through the basics um, and the kind of things that you'll want to know in advance and, and things that are important. So, first and foremost, planning is a key, right? <laughs> Planning out exactly what you want to do with your network is critical. Most people just go and they buy a router or they just use whatever their internet provider gave them and it doesn't work right and they just kind of live with it. But if you actually plan out your network from the get-go and you know where to place your router and where to place your switches and where to place your access points, you can have a much better experience in the long run. And so those, so those are the kind of things that we're going we're gonna to get into specifically. Um, Planning in general, sitting down and discussing with us what your overall concepts are, what your intentions are. Um, we can create realistic expectations, and, and then we can fulfill those expectations. That's the most important thing. I think that's what keeps little guys' clients happy is that, is that we set out realistic goals and we talk about the things that it can, a system can and, and can't do and, and things that you can expect and, and, and how it's going to work. Um, and you just let us know what your concepts are, what's... What is it that you want to do? So, so let's get to it. Let, the foundation of all the technologies today, the, te the foundation of all of our distributed systems and control systems and all the rest is the network. Absolutely. The network is critical for control systems, for thermostats, for lighting control, for... Appliances, appliances in today's world. Lights. Smart appliances, appliance is lights. Everything is talking on the network. And one of the big hurdles that we have to overcome in our homes is what the internet providers give us for our, our network. They give us an all-in-one box set that is supposed to do the Wi-Fi and do the routing and be your modem and, and be a, an all-in-one solution. And if you're just browsing the web on your phone, it's fine. It's never been designed to be an actual hub for an automated home, though, and that's where designing and upgrading that network can really I mean, it makes a huge difference, right? And people in 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 the beginning of computers and, and needing some kind of internet connection, um, we, we all basically had one computer in our house, right? We hooked up, we had we, we brought a line in and we hooked it up to the computer and everything was good. You know, to a modem, and we hooked it up and everything was good. But in today's world, there are so many devices in the, every smartphone, every tablet, every computer, every TV, every Blu-ray player, every. Um, if you're doing lighting, the lights, I mean, cameras, there's so much stuff going on. And a lot of our content is being delivered over the network as well. And content takes up a lot of space. I mean, sure. it really takes up a lot of space on the network. So having a good network that allocates space correctly is, 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 is huge and critical. So there are a lot of different design considerations. Like John was saying, um, how big is the house? Where do you use the stuff in the house? Do you want the entire house covered? Most people want the backyard covered too, For sure. right? Because you have some stuff outside, some speakers outside, but the components are inside, and you want to be able to control it from your phone or your tablet or whatever it is you're using out there. Um, that's really important. In streaming, people want to stream from their iPhones, from their Androids back into their system to play their music. And if you're outside in the backyard and, and you don't have good Wi-Fi coverage, your music is cutting out, it's, it's not yeah. making that connection, and it's, it's no fun. It's, it's a pain in the neck or whatever, that's for sure. And, and, and security, right? Secure Wi-Fi is obviously a big part of the thing, having secure networks that, um, that you're using and you're, and you're taking advantage of, not the rest of the neighborhood or yes. whatever, <laughs> right? I mean, it, it just so happens that Comcast has made us all repeaters yes. for their... Uh, for their Xfinity Wi-Fi system for their uh, cellular service and, and just for their uh, overall cover the world with Wi-Fi. Every one of your Comcast provided modems is not only broadcasting your Wi-Fi by default, it's also broadcasting their Wi-Fi by default. Right. I mean, it's it's pretty amazing or whatever what they've kind of done, and and we all we're all going along with it because we we just that's just the way it needs to be. So, all right, so secure Wi-Fi, um, really good um, connections throughout the house. Multiple users, 
so that kids are, are, are playing video games downstairs with, you know, people all over the, the world. Um, you're trying to stream your, the movie you want to watch on Netflix, and, um, and there's, somebody else is working the computer and, and earning, enough, earning, earning a living so that you can pay for all this stuff. Mm-hmm. Right? So that's, I mean, there's lots of stuff going on at the same time. It's really important that your network be solid, that the, that the concept is well done. Now, if you're building a new home or, you're, or we're putting on an addition or you're remodeling stuff, um, pre-wiring that structure is critical. Getting the wires in in advance, creating the infrastructure, adding things on over time can be done. It's not all wireless nowadays? No. That's, that's not, oh, Evie made me, made, <laughs> made me promise I would bring this up. If you're talking to a builder or an architect or a designer who tells you, don't worry, everything will be wireless, they're wrong. As much as we love them, as much as we care about with the design and all the rest of the stuff, that is not the reality. Every, in the next several years, everything will not be wireless. You are going to need wires, and really that's going to go on for much longer than that. For but, sure. But, but wired is the key, getting wires to the places and then having a good wireless signal so that you can control it wirelessly. That's important. Very important. Right? That, that's the key. So... Cancel the wireless concept in almost everything um, that we do. That includes the audio speakers. That includes the rest of it. It's not that you can't have a wireless speaker in a room um, and have it work. It will work. It will likely work. Um, but the less of that you have, the more wire uh, that you have throughout the house, the better the infrastructure is, The absolutely the better the performance is going to be. The speeds will be faster. The reliability will be greater. And there's less likely uh, any hassles with interference and noise and, and, and those kind of things. And all that does make a difference. All right, so let's talk about um, audio distributed throughout the house. Right? It's kind of our roots is audio and sound and, and music. There's a lot of ways um, to distribute audio throughout the house. Of course. Wired. <laughs> Almost always wired. So <laughs> all the components can be in, in one location, like, like in the basement. Yep. Um, the, all of your music can be stored on a hard drive somewhere. Um, it can be on your phones, it can be on your tablets, but, but so that those particular devices don't have to be there, it can be stored separately on a hard drive. And access to that music and information is available throughout the house. But more, more importantly, most people are using different streaming services nowadays for yeah. their audio. So we're not actually putting in as many hard storage. drives or, or storage yeah. solutions or even servers nowadays where people are just using Spotify or, or better yet Tidal or Cobas or some of the new high resolution streaming services which again take up more bandwidth right but but how about the sound I mean I just did the Cobas one or whatever it's unbelievable it's, the sound quality that we're getting out of streaming services today is, is it, it's awesome. years ahead of what we have if you're listening to Pandora and you think it's okay way do you try Tidal or or, or Spotify in some cases, or, um, or I call it Cubas. Yes, Q Q Q O B U Z. Yeah, Cubas. Cubas, whatever. Um, exceptional performance, really high res. Not music. a paid endorsement, but if you'd like to sponsor us, right. <laughs> There's David, lots of <laughs> there's lots of choices too. I mean, the, the amount of music available, it's virtually everything. It's hard to not find some some content that you're looking for. Yes, from from the extreme older. Jazz and and roaring twenties music and 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 foreign language stuff. I mean, just about everything is on there. And not only are you streaming that, but um, somebody asked me the other day, well, what about I want to listen to you know FM or AM in the basement? Well, you can uh, tune in radio and and radio dot com. Uh, radio dot com, tune in radio, and I I, I heard radio. I heart radio still. But they're kind of in trouble now, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, I think they're so. in a little trouble. But the, but, the, but the other two have just about every station in the world, with rare exception, um, all the local stations, stations all, again, all over the world, lots, of, lots to choose from. And that can all be distributed throughout the house. It can all be simple to use. The speakers can be in the ceiling. They can be in the walls. Um, lots of different options. And, uh, and again, getting the infrastructure in place. You don't necessarily have to do it all at once, but getting the infrastructure in place now um, while you're in the planning stages is really, really important. Uh, video the same way. There's a, there's a lot of different ways to do video or whatever, and, uh, and whether the source is local at the actual television that you're watching or all the cable boxes are in the basement or all the satellite receivers, or you're not even using satellite receivers or cable boxes anymore. You're just streaming stuff on Hulu and 
Yeah, uh, using the Apple Netflix Apple and Amazon. TV or using an Apple TV or a Roku box. Yeah. To uh, to again stream your uh, your content. Those are all those are all good choices for the video part. Um, and then having good video, having obviously with today's quality televisions and 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 the performance of today's equipment. Uh, the surround sound and all the things that go with that, just laying out those plans in advance just saves a lot of aggravation later. We've come into, the, we've come into people's homes after the fact so many times where the speaker's wires are in the wrong location or there's actually wires missing or um, they didn't take any consideration, the subwoofer or just so many things that people just... If you don't do it every day, that people just don't know or, or don't realize or whatever. And, and we're, we're still running the houses that have... Category five run or category five E, yeah. where we've been running Cat six at a minimum for ten years, at least ten years. Um, all of these new high resolution formats, even with a wire, you need to have that Cat six. Some of it will go over Cat five for a short distance, but it leaves no room for error. Right. When you run the Cat six or the Cat six A, the shielded, the better quality cable, even though you get a lot better margin for error when you're doing um, those high resolution streaming or high resolution transfer from. A central location to your television in your living room or family room or wherever it's going. I mean, the whole idea is to eliminate buffering, is to eliminate breakup, eliminate the you know the the, the aggravation of losing the signal completely. Um, it's just it's just so easy to do it right the first time, uh, and there's really no reason not to. Um, that same thing we were just talking about. And I I know I'm jumping backwards a little bit, but um, I was in a house the other day and they wired the house with uh, uh, 16 gauge wire. I mean, we, we stopped using 16-gauge wire in the late 90s, yeah. middle 90s. I mean, 14-gauge um, wire is, is really the, the, the standard. I mean, to, to, to use anything less is, is a mistake. But, um, you know, if somebody, competitors out there, it could be 20 cents less per foot or 10 cents less per foot on a bid using cheap wire, you know, they'll do it or whatever. Just There's a lot of little things like that that, that we need to discuss and explain and, and, and help you understand, so... Um, copper has gotten very expensive over the years, and a lot of the very low grade copper, you know, some companies will use it that the inexpensive 16 gauge, but we're still using AudioQuest 14, 14 gauge, and, and the wire is going to last. It's not. It's going to transfer the sound better. It's going to transfer more power, more efficiently, and you're going to end up with a better experience overall. I was even in. I was in a home where they didn't even pull CL3 rated wire in the walls. I mean, the inspector comes and sees that. Um, they're going to make you take it out. <laughs> they're not going to let you use it. That's for sure. Um, you know where it's not fire rated. It's just a lot, a lot of little things like that to be careful of. All right. So let's talk about um, your bread and butter. Let's talk about control systems and what people's expectations are from control systems in today's world. Now, the first thing is that people always ask is, can I talk to my control system? There's yeah. There's a lot of voice control that's getting better and getting more uh, integrated every day. Um, our Savant systems have a remote with a mic. They, uh, you can change your channel and you can turn your system on and off. It's really not um, fully baked yet. It's getting there. It's not like the Jetsons. You can't walk in the room and say whatever it is you're thinking and have it do that. Getting the right nomenclature and, and the right sequence of words to get it to do exactly what you want it to do Nobody ever remembers exactly, That's the thing. And, and, and it's so specific still. And if you do it over and over again, you can get kind of a, a rhythm down. Yeah. But, uh, I'm not saying you can't do it, and it, we're not saying you can't have fun with it. Just don't over... We, we don't want to create over-expectations. Don't rely yeah. on it yet. Yeah, that's it. That's <laughs> don't it. rely Learn on it. Learn how to touch the, the button and the dial or, yes. or the or the touch screen or, um, and, and do it that way. It, it, it will save you a lot of heartache and a lot of aggravation. Um, and, and most of our, all of our systems integrate with Alexa or, and or Google yeah. Home in some form or fashion. So you have a lot of uh, integration there as well with being able to talk to So Alexa. you can use the basic functions. It's just, it, it seriously isn't, it's, it's not at that, you know, maybe three years from now or five years from now, voice recognition will be in that spot. No, I mean, it's gotten so much better oh, over yeah, the, the last way couple of years. You know, 10 years ago, people were showing it at, at trade shows. They had to have specific scripts to, for, for to do exactly what they wanted it to do. Now... I mean, you can be off, and, and you can have an accent. You can have, right. you know, not not being the the perfect line of, of words. And my and example is always Alexa will learn. At, at she's not quite there yet, but at some point she will learn your specific voice. So if you walk in the room and say "Call mom," it'll call your mom. 
And if your wife walks in the room or your kid walks in the room and says, call mom, it'll call their mom. Um, it's, it's, it's different, completely different. Yeah. So um, they're getting there. A lot of other things you can control. What about lighting throughout the house? Uh, lighting is probably the, still the single most common integration with, uh, with the control systems that we do. Whether it's just basic security pathway lighting, so when you pull into your garage, you know, your garage light it comes on with your garage door, but your foyer light doesn't come on, or your uh, mudroom light doesn't come on, and that, that pathway to the kitchen, wouldn't it be nice if you came home when it was dark out, and when you opened your garage door, those light, that pathway to the kitchen just automatically lit up for you. And, and my favorite, any... which makes a ton of sense, my favorite is when you're going to bed at night, you hit the button on your nightstand, or you touch your phone or your tablet, um, and all the lights throughout the house that are connected through your lighting system, all the lights throughout the house go to the spot that you want them at when you're going to sleep. Yep. Not that I turn on the one, and did I turn out the kitchen light, did I turn out the living room light, which ones did I leave on, which ones did I leave off, you know, that kind of thing. And then you can set scenes as well, right? So you can set scenes um, that, that allow you to hit one button to set lighting yep. throughout a room or multiple rooms, or, or again, throughout the walls. Yeah, whether you're trying to illuminate art or you're trying to, landscape lighting is very popular because, you know, maybe the big oak, oak tree needs 100% illumination, but the small bushes in front of the house only need 50%, so you can do a lot with uh, with that as well. To, a know, lot of really to cool To set stuff. the ambiance and set the mood. It's really important. And, and, and um, a, lot, a lot of times the first reaction is, I can get up and flick the light switch. Yep. And we, we get that. We got it. But it's tough to do it when you're on vacation and you want to change the lighting throughout the house to, to make people think that there's somebody home. And it's tough to do it when you're, when you're out of town um, and, you, and you just want to you know, make some adjustments kind of a thing. Yeah. And make sure Lights you... are one of those things that when you don't have it, you make excuses and you, and you don't feel you do need it. But as soon as you do a couple, yeah. Yeah. it's addictive. You're like, oh, this is the coolest thing ever. I, I, let's add more. So I, I've never, I don't think I've ever had anybody who started with a couple and then didn't do anything else. Yeah. So it's and we use two. We, we focus on two control systems, right? We use Control Four, and we use Savant. Yes, those are our two favorite, and and we've been using them for a long time. In fact, we've been with both both of those two companies since their inceptions. Yeah, a couple of years after Control Four came out, we we rode the yeah, we I mean, rode the we rode the wave a little bit, making sure that things were going to be okay yeah. before we put them in people's homes. But we really have been with those companies a long, long time, or whatever. And uh, and they we, both we had Savant in our showroom in Homewood for almost two years before we actually sold any because we wanted to make sure well, because it, it was ready for prime. The first two years was not was not a situation. It was okay for us because we knew exactly what we were doing and we could fix it and reset it. And but we didn't want people to have that experience. So, um, but those days are long gone. I mean, this stuff today is extremely robust, extremely reliable, and extremely flexible. And one of the things that both Control4 and Savant have done is adapt to other companies' products significantly better than at the beginning. Yes. At the beginning, they wanted to use all their stuff and all their branded components, and, and that has gone by the wayside. They are working directly with all the major manufacturers. Yeah, with different partners and to make sure that the, the drivers and the profile, so whether you're doing a Lutron lighting system or whether you're doing a Yamaha or an Integra, Integra or Sony receiver, all the profiles and all the drivers are right. ready to go. Rather than, so we don't have to reinvent And it's not even just our, our components. It's the Schlage locks and the, and the different alarm companies and, the, and depending on which boards they're using and you know those kind of things. There's a lot of great integration. Yes. Right? Or super stuff. Um, we also do blinds and shades. Blinds? Yep. I don't know whether they're called blinds or shades, but we, well, we, I think they're kind of different, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> shades are typically the roller, the, the the single piece of fabric that rolls down and rolls up, where a shade is going to be like our verticals over here, yeah. or it's going to be a slatted or, or a honeycomb in some situations. So, so we do blinds and shades, and we, and we and we do motorized and non-motorized, but typically motorized are the ones that are controlled, obviously. Yep. And uh, and there's battery versions. That have come a long, long, long way. Simple to change the batteries. The batteries last a couple of years, easy, and um, and very simple to change. Not in the old days, it was a pain in the neck. You had to take the thing down, take it apart. It was a nightmare. In today's world, significantly better. And and they have motorized and non-motorized blinds that look the same. So if there's some windows that yep. you don't want to have the motor the motorized capability, uh, no problem. Right. No and, and Q Motion even has the non-motorized 
that you can upgrade to motorized in the future. In the future. Yeah, so if you really want to do start doing your house with blinds, you only get a couple that you want to make sure they're automated, you can buy the lesser expensive non-automated ones and you say a year down the road, man, I really wish I would have got the automated one. You can buy the motor, we take it down, we slap the motor in, we add it to the system. Now you've got motorized shades in, in those areas as well. Really cool. Um, all right, so let's talk about some of the safety items in the house. The door locks, mm -hmm. all right? Lots of different things you can do with that. You can let somebody in from where you're at. That's probably the most convenient uh, reason to have an automated lock is for a dog walker, for a, a house cleaner, for uh, the kid who lost his key and now he's locked out of the house and can't get in. Can't remember the combination <laughs> can't remember in the today's game. world. Well, even some don't actually have a combination. If you're very security conscious, yeah. you can get the motorized locks that, that don't actually have an external keypad. You still need to have a key, of course. Yeah. Uh, but if you want to make sure that you, you have total control over who gets in and out of that lock, uh, you can get one that doesn't have a, have a keypad, and you can set the ones that do have keypads for the, the keypad code only works between 10 and noon, or it only works between 4 and 6. That way, you don't have random codes out there for people to, to come visit your house at uh, 3 in the morning. There's um, cameras. Mm -hmm. have become a big a big thing, and doorbells slash cameras have become a bigger Huge. thing. Huge, yes. <laughs> I mean, that's the number one, uh, probably the number one request we get is the doorbell camera kind of a thing. Um, Hopefully wired. Um, Hopefully wired. I mean, the, the, the popularity of the, uh, the ring cameras, the doorbell phone cameras, the Nest cam doorbell cameras, uh, those, most of those basic ones you see out there are indeed uh, Wi-Fi by default. Uh, some of them can't even be wired. Um, but they are starting to trickle into some integration with the systems that we're doing. Uh, but you really want to get into some of the more advanced... Uh, door stations and, and controls to get that wired um, doorbell and to get those higher resolution cameras yeah, and, and more reliable cameras. Um, typically, uh, the, the the majority of what we're putting in are the more advanced door entries that um, let you do that kind of stuff Yes, and cameras. Um, there are also traditional camera cameras um, that can be mounted around the perimeter of the house, in the house, um, looking out at the backyard, there's from very simple to extreme. There's there's one one when it detect, if one camera detects motion, and there's other cameras in the same area. Yep. They'll turn in that direction. Yeah. Right. I mean, there's yeah, lots so of really cool so stuff. That's a uh, system that we're doing off of Vigilant, which allows us to you know you put in two or three, four different fixed cameras, so you save a couple bucks there by using a fixed camera, and you have one really nice high resolution pan tilt zoom. And when any these individual cameras do detect a person or, or an animal or some sort of motion, they'll talk to the PTZ and have it focus on that area. And then the PTZ can then even track the motion so you have uh, a better chance of being able to identify what was That's in your so yard cool. or, in your, or in your business and, and be able to uh, um, get a good picture if something does happen to the proper authority. And, and the price of cameras has come down substantially. Huge. That's for sure. Right? Huge. I mean, it's unbelievable Huge. the differences. Um, There's no excuses for the banks to have those horribly... <laughs> Terrible cameras when somebody robs them that nobody can ever identify. You can't tell who the robber was. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I mean, that, the plumber's pipes leak. I remember many, many years ago when we had we had that same situation at the old the old store in Glenwood, whatever. When some they smash and grab, and we have a great fuzzy picture of some guy in a hood. Right, we have no idea who he is. No how you know what what he looks like? I mean, nothing, zero. Right, we we couldn't even see a tattoo if they, if he had one. No. <laughs> and, and contrary to popular belief, you can't just plug it into a computer and magically fix the image right. like you can on TV. Right. It's got to be there in the first place. Um, all right, so one of the other areas, uh, HVAC, energy conservation and, and HVAC control in general, where you can control your air conditioning and heating, um, again, from in the house or within the network or even from work or on your way home from work. Right. Right, so you're coming home from work, and and you've had had the house set down to uh, seventy two all day, or seventy five all day, or eighty, or whatever whatever you do when you're not when you're not there. And instead of waiting till you get home and setting it to sixty eight, you can do that when you're when you're leaving work. You can do that when you're leaving work, and and uh, and by the time you get home, the house is cooled off and ready to go. Yep, a lot of really cool stuff. I mean, really really cool stuff. Um, there's also 
there's water sensors or hu humidity sensors. Well, humidity sensors for, for if you're de dealing with humidity, but a lot of the things that we even do nowadays is some of the uh, being able to detect uh, when your uh, sump pump stops working. There's a water sensor that we can place around your pit that if it gets wet, it's going to send you a, an alert. Uh, we have uh, main valve shutoffs even. So if you have a vacation home, if you have a, a something where you're not at that, you're on vacation and your water heater springs a leak, it'll monitor the water. And if, it, if you're using water when you're not home, it can shut off the main line and save you from having to walk into a all, house that's completely... All safe. kinds of pretty amazing stuff, that's for sure. Right, so there's a lot of different things that can be done. By the way, we're talking about automation and control for the home, but we do a lot of businesses. A lot of businesses. Bars, restaurants, instead of having 52 remote controls for all the TVs throughout the restaurant, our bar, instead of having, uh, uh, you know, and then every morning somebody has to pick up which remotes for which TV and go to the, all the different the bartenders places. love yeah. playing remote roulette. Just yeah. Which one do we need to turn this TV on? Um, anyway, it can all be done from control systems, whether you have a bank lobby or a, a training room or a boardroom. We do a lot of commercial work as well, and and uh, and schools and ice arenas. It just it goes on and on and on and on. And on. Um, gas stations. I mean, it's it's amazing. I mean, you got background music, you got video, you got satellite teleconference. There's all kinds of different stuff going on. So we can, we can handle all of that stuff for you, too. Um, a lot of options. I think the important thing is that we, we've been doing it for a long time. We're very good at what we do. And we can make sure that you understand how it works. And, and again, create realistic expectations. So you're not disappointed afterwards because you thought that if the, um, the, something weird happened, um, uh, that, that, that would tell this thing to do that and that thing to do this and that thing to do that and... And, and, and that's just not a realistic expectation, right? I mean, you got to have realistic expectations. Indeed. I mean, there, there's, you can do a lot with automation nowadays, but just because you can do it doesn't always mean you should do it. So you got to be planning out what, uh, what makes the most sense for you and, and setting the expectations of, of how you want things to operate uh, and working together to, to make sure you know, you, we make your life as better as, as we can. And here's one of the things that I, that, I, that I really like is, let's say all we're doing for now is we're c converting your four remote controls into a single remote control and or smart device, tablet, phone, um, for, a, for a single system. Your TV, your cable box, your Blu-ray player, maybe your receiver, your speakers, your soundbar, what, what, whatever you're doing. That's all we're doing. But we put in the brain, we put in the, the beginnings uh, host that, that allows you to expand, it allows you to, to do other things, and maybe even gives you some streaming music options that yep. you didn't have before. Um, a lot of really cool stuff, a lot of very basic stuff um, that, that can be expanded on and, and made to be a lot yeah, more both, fun. Yeah, both of the systems that we do are designed to start small and get big. I mean, you can start big if you want, but under $1,000 in hardware, you can control an average uh, home theater or, or surround sound system whether you have a TV, a Roku, an Apple TV, a cable box, uh, all, this, all the stuff that typically receiver is in your surround sound system can all be controlled with, with a minimal of hardware nowadays, and you can add on to that and expand on to that indefinitely. So we'll talk about the process real quick. The, the, the planning stages, sit down, come on into the store. We can have a conference here. We can sit and we can discuss all the different possibilities and options. We'll come to you. Um, the store is actually open the, um, 9 to 5, Monday through Friday, but we are absolutely available before and after store hours, uh, weekends if you need it, to, to sit and have those discussions and to have those planning um, stages and to go over the, the different options that are available. Uh, again, we can do it here. We can come and see you. Yep. Wh Whatever is good for you. You can email info at thelittleguys.com to set that up. You can stop by the store and uh, say hello. You can call us at 708-754-8844, and, uh, and again, you can email info at thelittleguys.com, and we can take care of it there. Um, we'll figure out what your, your plans are. We'll, figure, we'll lay out a, a very basic design and concept and, and kind of create some budgets. Um, and the more budget information you give us, the, the, the easier it, it is makes, for yeah, us. It makes the whole process work a little bit better, but we understand people really have still have no idea how much this stuff costs. So right. we're, we're here to help and work with you to, to meet your budget and, and to get you an idea of what, uh, what it's going to take to 
do what you want to do. And one other, one other quick thing. Um, people, people always ask, well, how, you know, should I just go buy my TVs from Best Buy or some other big box store or Costco or some other wherever, Amazon, whatever. Should I just go buy my TVs there? Um, because can't they sell them to me cheaper? And the answer is no. Um, you shouldn't. The, the Sony TVs, the LG TVs, the Samsung televisions, um, and the premium versions of all of those, um, we, we, we have the same prices or less uh, than anybody else. We're, we're always competitive on that stuff. Don't worry about it. We're part of a national buying group called Home Technology Specialists of America, HTSA. You can check it out at htsa.com. And, uh, and we work together with multiple dealers, and all of our numbers get put together so that we are important to those big companies. Right? So don't worry about that. The most important thing is we're going to help you figure out what it is you want to accomplish. We're going to help you figure out the very best products to make that happen, and we're going to make it easy to use. We're going to make it so that it's not every time you use it, you got to make a phone call. We're going to make it so that it's um, reliable. And, and because we do the network, because we're, we're creating that infrastructure in advance, um, you know, we know that it's going to be okay, it's going to be reliable, and it's going to do what it's supposed to do. And that's, that's how we, we've made a living for a long, long time. So. All right. I wanna, uh, thank everybody for tuning in. We went a little bit long, but that's okay. Uh, rem remind everybody, call us, 708-754-8844. Email us, info at thelittleguys.com. Message us on Facebook. Um, you know where you're at because you're already there. And, uh, and thanks for tuning in. This podcast um, was brought to you by The Little Guys. And, and, and no sponsors yet, but they're coming. Um, We'll talk to you in our next podcast. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.